welcome to my shelf and actually my shelf I have my own bookshelf now my own bookcase and it's beautiful I won't be doing a bookshelf tour until next year when I actually have more books but I promise I will do one in the future I just don't really have that much to show right now but I will be one coming very soon so today I'm doing my September wrap up as you can see from the title just what I read this month whether I enjoyed it what I rated it on Goodreads etc etc without further ado here's everything that I read in September the first book that I read in the month of September was Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban by JK Rowling this is by far my favorite Harry Potter book so far because I gave it a five stars on Goodreads <laughs> like Prisoner of Azkaban is very different from the other books. Same storyline of Voldemort chasing Harry and living vicariously through people. Like the first book we had Krill, the second book was Ginny. It gets quite, dare I say, boring. Although that Pettigrew was linked to Voldemort, the storyline was a bit different because we had to worry about Sirius and Sirius Black had escaped from Azkaban and it was like, <gasps> it wasn't a whole like, oh no, Voldemort. It was more of a... Oh my god, Sirius Black. I like Sirius Black, so I was loving it. Granted, Sirius Black's whole story is to do with Voldemort, but he isn't Voldemort, and I feel like it was something different and something that I really, really enjoyed. I fell in love with Sirius's character more and more throughout the book, and I actually teared up when he escaped. Like, I was like, yes, bitch, you fly on, you fly on that bitch, you get there. Snape! is a dick he isn't growing on me like everybody said he would the only reason why i remotely like him a little bit is because alan rickman plays him in the movie that's the only reason why i could say that snape isn't one of my least favorite characters because i feel like that would be a disservice on alan rickman <laughs> dumbledore still love him everyone knows that dumbledore is my favorite character because of how wise he is and he is probably one of my fictional role models that i have i'll probably make a video on it of fictional role models one day when I have enough of them. Dumbledore, still my man, still loving him to pieces. Harry got more and more annoying and living in his point of view and in his brain got very muddled sometimes because he contradicted himself. He didn't really know what he wanted. He got very angry at people for no reason. He got quite cocky, I feel like, because everyone kept praising him and I can actually see why Draco got a little bit annoyed at him and continues to get a little bit annoyed at him because he is the golden child and he can do no wrong and I can actually see why people would hate Harry Potter. Anyway, all in all, best Harry Potter book in my opinion. This book gave me the same warm fuzzy feeling as the first one did, so five stars. Thank you very much. The second book that I read in September was How to Win Everything by George Watsky. I don't have this copy with me right now because it is my boyfriend's and he took it back from me, of course. I borrowed his book. I've actually done a review on this on my channel before, so I'll link that in the description box below if you want to go and see it. In a nutshell, I think that Callum's expectations kind of made mine a bit too high for this book. And so I was kind of like, Mm. I just wanted more of his political views and his political side because I know it's in Watsky, I know that he's got it in him. I just wanted to see it a lot more. Watsky's writing style is so unique and it flows really well because he's a poet and he's a rapper and he writes so well and I would love to hear more of his stories. Maybe he could write a fictional book that would be amazing. I think he's a really talented writer. My expectations are way too high because Callum loves him so much and I, I like his music and stuff but not a super fan and Callum is and he told me to read it so I had like super fan expectations but it didn't actually fulfill them because I'm not actually a super fan and it was just really confusing and I was contradicting myself and I probably made myself hate it even more <laughs> I gave it three stars on Goodreads and again if you'd like to go and watch my full review it'll be in the description box below the third book that I read in September was Wonder Woman Warbringer by Lee Bardugo this book has been on every single one of my social medias for months now <laughs> I gave this a 4.5 out of 5 stars on Goodreads and again I did a massive like review on my channel so if you'd like to see that I'd also link that in the description box below I Went into this not really knowing who Lee Bardugo was, her writing style, how well she flowed. I just went in knowing that I loved Wonder Woman and Lee Bardugo did a wonderful job creating a legacy, taking on massive, you know, franchise and making it her own, but also giving us the continuity that we wanted to see as fans. I could have read this book a little bit faster. I wanted to take all of it in, properly digest the book. I love the way that Diana was represented. I love magical realism and I love when a character gets stuck into a world they don't understand and they are magical or they get stuck in a real world or they're real and get stuck in a magical world. I just love it so much. Jason is one of my least favorite characters on my novel. He gets that prize because I fucking hated him. I would have given it a five out of five stars, but a bit of queer beating between the main character, Diana and Aaliyah. We got blue board quite a lot with the storyline with um, Diana and her mother. I feel like that could have been expanded a little bit more. Feel free to watch my 
spoiler free review link in the description box below. The fourth book that I read in September was Goblet of Fire by J.K. Rowling which is another book in the Harry Potter series. This one I gave a four stars out of five on Goodreads. It was only magical towards the end. I enjoyed it a lot towards the end. Some places it was a bit slow but I do have a little bit of a positive with this book is this book made me realise how much I actually love audiobooks and how much I can get done while reading if I am reading along with an audiobook. It's a massive book. I know it's not the biggest but to me this is the biggest. I think this is the biggest book I've ever read. As soon as Harry entered the Triwizard a tournament I was on the edge of my seat. Literally I was there literally begging for mercy because it was so tense. Like Prisoner of Azkaban had a slightly different plot line to do with Voldemort but Voldemort was still in incorporated into it. I had to worry about Triwizard a tournament, who put Harry's name in the Goblet of Fire, he said calmly. Two words, Cedric Diggory. It really got me. I cried a lot. <laughs> and the last book that I read in the month of September was When Red Becomes Air by Paul Kalanithi. I gave this a five stars on Goodreads and I'm not really sure if I want to do a whole review on it because I'm not sure if I have enough thoughts. If you would want that, comment that down below or give this video a thumbs up to let me know that you want it. When Breath Becomes Air is a life story telling of Paul Kalanithi. He is a neurosurgeon who gets lung cancer and this is his story. I went into this thinking it was a fictional story and boy I was wrong. <laughs> when I added to my Goodreads I had no idea about Paul's legacy or how intelligent that he was but I knew something in my brain was telling me to grab this book as soon as I could because it was going to be amazing and it wasn't wrong. Breath Becomes Air is not about a fictional diegesis. It's about his life and his cancer story and it goes all the way from his work and how he dealt with being a neurosurgeon and getting there and it shows you the process of being a, in like a medical school to his relationship with his wife and then wanting to have a baby. This could have potentially put someone off that it wasn't about a fictional diegesis but I wasn't put off at all because I'm a biology nerd, I'm a science nerd, I didn't get, I'm not really clever enough to study science and biology but I absolutely love learning about it nevertheless and this kind of made me live vicariously through Paul and his wife Lucy. It's a lovely telling of a story and I love biology. <laughs> I fell in love with his writing throughout the whole of the book. Like he is a phenomenal writer. It flows so well. He's so funny. Like he had me giggling all the way through and it's not a comedy. It's very sad. I did cry and a lot of people who sobbed during this book. But it was really funny. I was expecting it to be like just dark all the way through but it was actually hilarious in some points. My favourite part in the whole book was when him and his wife Lucy are looking at a baby scan well it's her baby scan spoiler alert and he points to the baby or the blob he calls it and says look it's got your cell membrane and it was just really funny to me I just wish it lasted a little bit longer but that couldn't have happened because he passed away rest in peace to Paul Kalanithi an amazing person writer doctor father and husband I really hope that your legacy lives on within your children and your family and it will certainly live on within me in this book because I absolutely adored it so all the books that I read in September plus George Watts book. Um, I couldn't, obviously don't have that with me so I can't hold it up for you. This looks pathetic compared to some people's TBR and like wrap up piles but this is actually a really good reading month for me. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed. If you did please give it a massive thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I have a main channel as well called Shack Attack, not just this one. I have a different one as well which I post on every single Wednesday. Go and check that out if you really want to. It'll be in the description box of all my videos if you want to do that. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you on Friday for a new video. Bye! Fly and fly and see them soar up into the unknown. But I feel just like a nerd watching birds watching me here.